I remember, I don't know who it was said, but we got to add a man overboard and you think, that's the last thing on God's earth you want to do, you know, for real. You've done it on exercising with inspectors and that, but to actually hear that you lost somebody was pretty horrendous, really. I remember Chris saying, no, we're going to turn around to port to go back to pick up Mike, the port the, the rescue for that time period to go back and pick up Mike. And as we were turning, the lifeboat started to go over to starboard and she was running down. And I, well, the water was coming back to where the capstan was and she was digging her shoulder in her starboard shoulder. Mm -hmm. and. She just had the momentum to carry on. And I was sat down there looking at it and I thought, I don't like a look at this. And I looked up the top of the, out through the top of the wheelhouse and looking at the radar one thing and then we're right over on her side and she was still going. So I thought, she's going. There's no way she's going to start rolling now. And I remember the wheelhouse, the top of the wheelhouse door going in the water and going black and the top of the wheelhouse itself going black and then it was like a load of firemen there with hoses and we were now upside down forgot all about the airbag didn't even think about that and we were trapped down below with our life jackets so um, the deck became the top like you know, we were you know, all the wrong way round and you go aboard the boat every day of your life arch and you, you're still lost <coughs> And then the white water stopped and it went black and still. And we tried to find, well, I don't know what the attempt was to get out, I suppose, but we didn't have a clue where we were. Not a clue. And then I remember a clump of light about the size of your fist on the starboard door, and that was the boat coming up right. And the minute she came up right out of the water, the water just drained out of her through the scuppers because the after cabin was scuppered in those days and the wheelhouse and the rest of it was watertight and um, <coughs> she emptied herself and we were then we turned, when she came up right she was doing nine knots she had the cutback solenoids but she didn't have the capsized solenoids then and we turned around to go and pick up Mike and we had to go back into the weather that we'd just been capsized in and so we were on deck then, when we all yeah. we were all out there ready to get Mike. And the lifeboat went on this massive great scene. We could see Mike, then we couldn't. And Griff didn't like a look of it because he couldn't couldn't see Mike in the water. So he just went to port a bit. We came down and missed him. And then we turned around again. And luckily the second run in, we didn't roll or nothing, but we were still in those sea conditions. We went back and we were out on the deck in the starboard side and she rode down nearly to her guardrails and there was mine. Brian Clayton came by me um, and he said, watch out Mike, there's a big one coming. Um, I had to unhook my uh, safety line to let, uh, to let Brian through um, and then as I clipped it back on, this wall of water just hit, and uh, I, I was I was gone. I mean, there was no, uh, there was no, there was nothing, nothing I could do. You know, it was, it was tons and tons of water just washing me away. Um, but I do surf, I do swim quite quite a lot, um, and uh, I, but I was just going down and down and down into the water, <coughs> and. Uh, as I went further and further down, I saw these two cameos of my sons, and uh, I thought, what are you doing down here? And uh, I said, Let, let's go up. And, and so as I turned to go up, I saw this sort of champagne water uh, bubbles. I thought, that must be the surface. I, I, I popped up, and stupidly, I had this watch on, not this watch, another watch. And as I hit the water, I saw my watch undone. Um, and uh, so I sort of fast with it, and then I looked over, you know, put, put it back to, so they wouldn't lose it. Good watch. Um, stupid things you do. And that's when I saw the boat uh, upside down and the prop still turning. 
I felt terrible emotion because all my mates were, were, were possibly lost. Then when I saw the boat come back over, uh, that was okay. And uh, I just, uh, I knew I could get to shore, but I had, uh, I had my, my vest on, but unfortunately my boots, ankle boots, thigh boots, were filling up the water and dragging my, dragging my feet down. And, and I thought, well, I better not get rid of her the boots because I'll only get into trouble. <laughs> um, either Edward Hannaford or Smear would tell me, or somebody would tell me. He's not joking, I No. <laughs> um, but I was sort of, well, I was lying on my back and I was using my hands for paddling, but the way I wanted to go, the sea was, was following, so I was looking up at these great walls of water again. I thought, oh, I'm not very keen on that. So, and my hood I put up so as I could snatch breaths of air. I saw the life, uh, saw, saw the lifeboat come coming towards me, but it got picked up on this this wave, and then crashed down in the trough beside me. I thought, "Whoa, they're really crossing me." <laughs> and <laughs> then on, but I knew that the, the the side that they were coming on, I think it was the, the starboard side. The, 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 there's the, there's a net, and so on the next sweep through, um, I, when they came by. It dropped down, I came up, and I grabbed this net, and I was pulled, over, pulled on board. All I can remember was the door of the wash whipping in, the seat went behind us, and it pushed the boat over, I was by the anchor, and it was up to about there. All I could see was Michael's feet up in the air and just poof, disappeared. And the next sea beyond, I looked back to where Ixing was, and this sea just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and the boat went up, wasn't it? Mm. And it was up on end, the boat was up. Well, I was up to the water again, but then all of us said the boat was up like that then. I went under, well, the boat that must have tipped, tipped over, I went under the other time we went. And uh, I was hanging on where the, where the anchor used to be. Feedback behind me, track it would go into the water like a rocket, it would seem like it. And all of, I didn't think the boat would capsize. And all of a sudden, it just went still, from all like white water, you know, all the, you know. It just went still and green, and I thought, bloody hell, you know, I'm off. So I got, pulled myself down to the right, because my nickname is Whale, because it's basically a lot of swimming. <laughs> is that the reason? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a different reason. <laughs> I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> I got that far under the rail, and also the chain was like pushing me down again. That's all. I just pushed away from it. Like, well, it was panic, I suppose. And, you, and the next thing, there's something that whacked me right there, and it was a mass, and the blue light was about there, sort of thing. And they come flying at the water. That right. Well, I couldn't see Roger at the time, because the boat was still underwater, so they dropped it on the deck, and then Roger was on his back, right near it. The wheelhouse is still full of water. The boat was like sunk went down in the, in the water sort of thing. Like you can see Michael Bob up. But a lot of people have asked me since, oh, what was it like, what was it like? I said, all I can say is, it's a good experience to have, <laughs> but one you would never wish on anybody else. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, we all got away with bumps and bruises, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. We were lucky. I mean, there's other crews of all, all drowned or... I think if somebody had lost their life, if or somebody had lost their life, it would have been very difficult. You know, it was, you know, almost in slow motion. Mm. as you went over, and then when she stopped, you thought, that's it, she's not going to come up, because you forget about the airbag, and she was totally, as you said, still. Still. It's weird absolute, feeling. It's a really weird... No sort of, movement at all. Mm. And I then, now why I did this, I don't know, but I then crawled from the port side to the starboard side, and then started to go down, because, of course, your life jacket's holding you up on the deck. That's the trouble, the life jacket's yeah. spinning you up. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so I was starting to pull myself down um, to go into the guard rails when you could feel her starting to move up again. So I just hung on and up we came. And there was David up the mast. But it was when we looked back into the wheelhouse, you couldn't see anyone. It was just full of water, wasn't it? Still, yeah. still right at the top. Yeah. The right at the top. And it really, our first thought was because we'd lost them. That was the, really the worst bit. Well, I do remember that. 
when we were upside down, the first thought in my mind was actually that the day before, on the Friday, I bought a business in Torquay. And if I didn't survive, this, <laughs> my wife was going to be left with this huge debt of a business I bought. Yeah. Um, but of course it was fine. But you did things by training, because we were clipped on. But you had to unclip yourself. I don't even remember doing that, but I remember when we came up right, the line was in, in the jacket pocket. Mm. I mean, it was it really was, if you wanted a textbook cap science, that was it. My wife had the radio on in the, in the house, and um, she, she'd heard that we capsized, but we had two small kids then. So she went down the lifeboat house, which they never used to do, really. Nobody ever went down there. Like, no, well, I don't mean that nasty, but it was a regular thing. And, you know, the lifeboat went out, and that was it. And Bill Budget always said he, it was the most upsetting time of the whole operation. Seeing Brie there with the two kids. And they didn't really know then that we were all right. So will there be a 50th anniversary? If we're still we're right. the 40th. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're we'll, we'll doing yeah. you know, 31, 32. <laughs> but the other thing was we, when we, we had the Upham's yard in Brixton and they, they were all bored when we were doing the trials. There was only me up there doing the trials. And we went into Dartmouth to swing a compass. And everything, you, if you open the lid, there's an arrow this way up. <laughs> <laughs> and everywhere, in the engine room, every, and Chris, Chris Price said to me, he said, how do you feel about this? I said, oh, all right, you know, a good bit of barter, like, you know. 